Now I will say that one of the things that I like to do is when I have settings that I like, I will duplicate my own brush so that I can maintain those settings and then just change and make tweaks. So that's why I wanted to walk you through, you know, everything that a brush will entail um, beforehand so you can make these little tweaks to brushes you already have and that way it's going to render exactly how you want because otherwise it just kind of becomes annoying and redundant to have to go through and change every single thing the way that you, you know, the way you want it to work. For the sake of building from the ground up, you can do one of two things. You can go to Procreate's Originals and let's say you like the way that the Studio Pen works but you want to change it. So you can swipe to the left and say duplicate and then you can drag this new one into a, a different fo uh, folder. So let's say um, I have my pigeon folder that this is basically stuff I'm working on that isn't done yet. So I can take this duplicate, come over here to pigeon and drop it in here and then say, um, go to about this brush and just say in progress. It doesn't matter that I spelled that wrong, but that's telling me, so I'm basically using this as a starting point and then tweaking it how I want it to, to um, how I want it to behave. So like the shape source, I can go in and change that. And that alone may make a huge difference. Like if I go to ink sponge, say done, then it could, it kind of makes a little bit of a difference. If I go to grain, and go to source library and grab something weird, then I can see if that makes much of a difference. And it looks like it adds a little bit of texture. So if I was to apply color to that, it just kind of makes things look a little bit more rough, um, not super rough, but let's say I did want it to be rough. That's where I know that my stroke path can have a jitter. So I can turn the stroke path up a little bit to create a jitter. Because the grain is a little bit soft, instead of, and the um, shape looks a little more soft, you can see that the edges are softer. Um, I could turn on the rotation. That's gonna shift the shape itself, and it didn't do a whole lot, but I could do scatter see if that does anything. It does a little bit, but it's not going to give you as much as jitter will. I can also increase the size by going to um, my properties and increase the maximum size. So that's going to make the size of the stroke thicker and go to Apple Pencil and maybe change the pressure to not be so thin at the ends. So now let's see so that gives a totally different type of response. Um, I don't like it to be that large, let's say, so I'll go back to properties, turn the maximum size down, and see how this looks. Okay, so that's looking more of like a custom design that I do like. It maintains like general settings, but that's how you would, like you could use these to tweak and form brushes how you'd want based off of like the the core settings that you have um, that you know you like. For like Apple Pencil, if I wanted there to be a flow to this based off of pressure, I could do that, which would be really pretty because then it would start to fade off based off of pressure. So see, you can do that, you know, press down, lift up, and then you can make it so the size doesn't have any variation, but just the opacity does. So that would look like harder pressure, softer pressure. So let's build a brush from scratch. I'm gonna go back to black here, and I can delete this. And anytime that you want to create a new brush, you just go to this plus sign. Real quick, if you want to go and create a new brush set, you would just pull down on the brush set panel and say plus and then new set of course new set there we go go to that new set make sure you're on it and then you have your new brush so this does come up with kind of like an airbrush e style but 
the shape is solid. So this is just your opacity properties. So it does have a standard um, that it sets you up with. You can see that for the most part, the settings are pretty simple. Uh, Apple Pencil, there's no size changes. It's just opacity so that you have the lighter and then the heavier when you apply pressure. Let's say for now, I just wanna make a stippling brush, okay? So stippling is essentially a bunch of dots together and I want to make it so that I can do that for shading. So I know that my shape source is round, so that's gonna be what shows up because I'm creating a stamp that repeats itself. If I want that to look different, like if I wanted hatch marks, then I could upload hatch marks, which I'll show you next. But for now, I'm just going to show you the simple way to create this. Um, so what I want to do is I want to uh, change the stroke path spacing. So I turn that up and you can see it changes the spacing. If I say jitter, it's going to push things out. So for example, if I have my spacing together, remember that uh, jitter comes off of that stroke path. So if the spacing is far apart, the jitter is still pushing these individual um, stamps along that stroke path sideways. It's just that they're separated now. So there's not going to be that clean line if you have the jitter coming into play. So this is jitter when you can see it on a spaced out way. So I think that's fun. I'm not going to do fall off unless you wanted to and then you could have it be where as you go it's going to fall off. I don't like it so I'm not going to do it. So there's still some opacity happening and that's because it's in Apple Pencil. The opacity is up to max based off of pressure. So I'm going to turn that all the way off so that opacity is not affected. So now you can see, whoops, now you can see that there's no opacity to be had. So there we go. Um, now, I don't need stabilization. I'm not trying to make any lines smooth. I don't need any tapering. Um, my shape source is set. This is just going to be a stippling brush. Uh, then my render and the flow, I want this just to be all the way up. And my wet mix, there's, I'm not changing anything. There's no need to um, color dynamics. I could play with that if I wanted to, but for this, I just want to keep it solid. Um, and then dynamics, I don't really touch. Apple Pencil, we've already adjusted that. My properties, I am going to use, um, not use a stamp preview because I want it to show up like a stippling brush would. Um, so right now it's pretty big. So I want to turn the preview size down and then I kind of see it, but let's see, this is pretty big still, and I could change the size as I'm using it, but I don't ever want it to be this big, so I'm gonna go back and change the max, or not opacity, maximum size to make it pretty small, and minimum size is gonna come up also. So that looks about right, and when I'm stippling, yeah, that looks about right. So if I bring that down more and more and more and more, yeah, so that's what I'm looking for here. And then I can always increase the size and have it work the way that I want it to. Great. So I have a stippling brush now, and you should too. <laughs> and the last thing I want to do is go to About This Brush and title it. So I can say Stippling Brush Made By Me, and then sign my little name, <laughs> add a picture if I want to. Uh, create new reset point so that it is saved as this and not what it originally started at. And that way, if I'm ever tweaking it or doing something later, I can always go back and say reset brush and then it will reset to these settings. Um, but can't go beyond, can't go anywhere earlier than that. And then now I have this stippling brush.